Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great week. I'm happy to be back in the shop today after some much needed vacation. I was just over in Maui, Hawaii, just relaxing a little bit, getting some sunshine and having some fun. I tried out kite surfing out on the ocean, which I think is my new favorite sport. It was pretty awesome. And most importantly, I did a lot of planning and brainstorming for this year's projects and tutorials. Um, and as always, I love to hear ideas that you have for other upcoming projects and tutorials, so please comment below with those. Now today's video is going to be just a little bit different because we're not going to be a, doing a complete project um, because I didn't have time to build one while I was gone, but I have had a lot of questions about concrete and some of the different techniques in finishing it, coloring it, and giving it texture. So let's go ahead and dive into answering some of those questions. Now the first question comes from Kate. Kate's looking to build a concrete vanity with that stone or rock-like texture on the front. And so she wonders how to get that texture. So Kate, the answer is all you gotta do is buy one of these rubber molds. You can order these online. I think this one was right around $40 to $50. It's just going to depend on the length of the mold and its thickness. But you can see this has a rock-like texture. And if you watch one of the videos like my how to build a concrete dining table, video you can see how the typical mold is made and then you can put this inside the mold and fasten it to that and then the concrete is going to form right along this rock like texture and you'll let it cure and then you'll pull this away and it's going to have that really cool stone appearance. The next question comes from Sean who asks, Pete what are some different ways I can color concrete? So Sean there's a bunch of different ways I'll go through just a couple. The first is to use a pigment and these typically come in a liquid form or a powder pigment form and you'll pour this into the mix while you're stirring it all up and that's going to give concrete the exact same color all the way through as long as you mix it well. There's all sorts of different colors. Quickcrete makes a lot and you can find a lot of different ones on Amazon if you can't find the exact color you're looking for. One other way that I like to do quite frequently is acid stain or using some sort of a concrete stain and you actually do this after your concrete has been poured and cured. Uh, make sure it has had plenty of time to dry before you do any of the staining. But acid stain is really neat because it reacts chemically with the limestone in the concrete and gives it all sorts of variations in color. And generally they are more natural tones, so browns, maroons, oranges, um, and dark walnut colors. It's really cool. So that's a little bit about coloring. Now the last question comes from Megan, who's wondering some of the main differences between finishing concrete counters and tables with your normal orbital sander versus a concrete wet polisher. So I'll go through some of the main differences. I generally recommend the orbital sander because it's something that many of you already own so you don't have to go buy something new. But some of the key differences are, number one, it's a completely dry process so it is very dusty. Um, you do no use normal sanding pads on the bottom and you're going to get kind of more of a creamy, even look on the top. You're not going to be able to expose much aggregate, and if you do, it's not going to be as smooth as you want it to be. The big difference is that with a wet polisher, you can expose the aggregate as much or as little as you want. It's a wet process because you hook it up to a water source, and water will actually feed out through the center here, and then you'll use industrial grade diamonds. And you can start with something like a 50 grit, which is going to expose a bunch of the rock in the concrete. Uh, or you can start with, say, a 400 grit or even an 800 if you barely want to expose any of the sand or the aggregate. Now in combination with the wet polisher, you can also use these hand diamond polishing pads. These work great sometimes for hard to reach spots, um, sometimes for the edges. Now, if you have a smaller project, you probably could get away with just using hand polishing pads if you don't wanna go out and buy a concrete wet polisher, um, but it is going to take a lot of elbow grease, and if you are doing a bigger project, I'd highly recommend renting one of these if you can find one, or buying one off Amazon, and I'll have the link in the description below. I think it's around $200-ish. Now we're going to quickly walk through the process of concrete polishing. I promise I'll have some more detailed information in some tutorials to follow. But to start, you'll need your concrete wet polisher, a water source, so a garden hose, or I rigged up a little pump sprayer, which will also work. You're going to need your diamond pads with various grits, and then protective equipment, you want eyeglasses, and this is a very messy process. 
Um, it's very wet and just like concrete slurries flying all over. So you'll want some rubber boots if you have some. A lot of times I wear my old fly fishing waders, uh, maybe an old um, rain jacket. And if you don't have a rain jacket, if all else fails, just grab an old garbage bag and you can put this on. That's what I'm actually gonna do today. I'd also recommend doing this outside if you can. To wet polish, you'll want to choose a pad, turn on the water supply, and then slowly move the polisher in a random pattern around the surface of the concrete. I started with 800 grit to show you that you can polish without having to expose the aggregate. I didn't polish the sides in this example, but if you're going to do a complete counter, you'll want to polish the sides and round over or bevel the top edges. The object in the corner of the concrete is a piece of sliced agate that can be polished perfectly even with the concrete. Here's an example showing an aggressive pad that's 50 grit. It's going to cut right through the top cream of the concrete to expose sand, rock, and whatever else is mixed in the concrete. Now this is ideal if you're looking to mix crushed glass into the concrete mixture. You'll expose the glass quickly and it's going to be perfectly flush with the rest of the surface. Note that the coarse grit industrial diamond polishing pads work in the same manner as your normal sandpaper. So the coarse grit pads will leave scratches and swirl marks. You'll want to gradually go from 50 grit to 200 to 400 grit and then finish up with about 800 or 1500 for a nice shiny and smooth finish without any swirl marks or scratches. As you move your way up to the higher grit pads, you'll be taking off much less material. So the water on the surface you are polishing will get clearer as you go up in grit. Now 50 to 400 grit will take off a decent amount of material and I refer to those stages more as grinding. Once you get to the 800 grit and up, you are more so polishing the top and not removing material. Now I generally finish up at 800 or 1500 grit depending on the sheen I'm going for and you will want to go back and fill in any bug holes if there are any. After the final polish, you can finish up your piece by sealing the concrete. Here's a look at the final round of polishing using the 1500 grit pad. The surface is super smooth and the aggregate and surface will look great, especially once a sealer is applied. All right, we're done. My shop's a mess. I'm a mess. At least we have a smooth and shiny countertop. But I hope you found this video helpful and that you learned something about polishing concrete. If you have any questions, please comment below. Like I said, I'll have a lot more details on polishing in some upcoming tutorials. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. To see how this concrete and LED lit patio table was built and polished, click on the thumbnail. And if you found these tips helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Cheers.